Hey guys, this is Samad here from DIY King and we are back with another project video. The wind generator that you have seen in the previous shot is a DIY one and that's built using this car alternator that's rated at 24 volt. So before we start this DIY video, what we are going to do is to attend that call and uh, <laughs> later disassemble this whole thing so that we are getting rid of the unnecessary parts like the pump over here and uh, the fin that's rotating right over here so let's undo those parts and later we are going to look at how we are going to generate power out of this alternator so this thing seems like an oil pump that we don't need anymore so we have got the alternator over here and now we are ready to remove the pulley and the cooling fan behind that. Now with that we are done removing all the unnecessary part from this alternator and you might be thinking that we are ready to generate lots of power using this alternator but that's not the case as we can show over here. Mujiba, can you rotate the alternator using the impact wrench and we are going to show you we get nothing on our multimeter right now. Now that's a sufficient speed for this alternator to produce a lot of power but as you can see over there we are not producing that much as it's just 0.5 volts so the thing is that there is nothing wrong with this alternator. This whole alternator is built using magnet wire both in the router and the stator winding. So we need to activate the router winding in order to produce the voltage out of this alternator. So first of all we are going to unscrew all the bolts over the alternator and see what's inside. So here we have got the alternator disassembled and as you can see over there the commutator provides power to the router coil in order to magnetize it and the connector over here that might seems like it's directly connected to the router is not because there is a voltage regulator in between that makes sure that regardless of the engine speed the alternator generates consistent voltage. Now we need to bypass the voltage regulator and directly connect a pair of wires to the carbon brushes in order to magnetize the router coil using an external battery pack. So we have soldered an XT60 connector to the carbon brushes and as you can see over here the voltage regulator is disconnected from the main rectifier unit so now it's time to reassemble the alternator and see if it's worth the try or not. So we have successfully hacked this alternator and it's producing nearly 18 volts at 700 rpm. Besides that we are using a 12 volt lithium polymer battery that's providing 30 watts of power to the router coil in order to magnetize it. Now it's time to get our hands dirty as we build the frame to hold everything together.
The frame is built around the alternator followed by a bearing holder that will allow to point the generator into the wind direction. Now instead of going with the fixed tail design, we decided to build a furling tail mechanism that will prevent the generator from over speeding. More on that later as it's time to get the job done. Once all the parts are set to dry, it was time to start working on the blades. To keep things simple, we have used PVC pipe that's 6 inch in diameter and 44 inch in length. So we started by chopping the pipe into 3 pieces, each of which was later sliced into a pair of blades. Now before we assemble everything together, I would love to thank GLC PCB for making this video possible. They are one of the largest PCB manufacturers around the globe, providing finest quality services ranging from customized printed circuit boards manufacturing and their assembly. The process to order is simple, so check out the link in the description below to order your PCBs right at your doorstep. Now with that being said, it's time to assemble our wind generator.
So guys, we have got Taza Khan over here. He's going to help us get this bird on top of the roof. Mutba is going on the roof and uh, there it's time to transport this thing right over there on top of this pole. Well, if you are listening to this, we did manage to save our asses. The wind was blowing quite a lot and if you have noticed, the tail starts furling towards the left. Now this happens when the blade achieves momentum as the turbine reaches its threshold speed, which can be lowered by decreasing the size of tail and its weight and vice versa. This prevents the turbine from overspeeding as the blades are not following the wind direction anymore. Aside from having this much wind, we are unable to get the required RPM. We were aiming for 700 RPM while the turbine initially achieved 200, so we switched to shorter blades which did increase the RPM but still we were halfway down there at 350 RPM. The maximum output we were able to get was around 50 watts which barely compensates the amount of power we are using to magnetize the rotor coil and is way less than what we have expected. Well, using a car alternator for a wind turbine might not be a good idea. But before we fall into this conclusion, there are some tweaks that we are looking forward to overcome these issues like replacing the current router with a permanent magnet one and increasing the router speed using a higher gear ratio between the blades and the alternator. Now that's something we'll cover in another DIY project video, so drop down your suggestions in the comment section down below. Now that's our take having fun with the winds and building this wind turbine. Hit thumbs up if you love the build and we'll see you soon in the next one.